<coughs> oh, shit, I forgot. I'm a YouTuber. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Retune Physique. Thank you for stopping by. And I know, I know it's been a little bit of a while, which which is kind of weird for this channel. I mean, that <laughs> that is really out of character, right? <laughs> But yes, I am back, and guys, today is a pretty damn exciting, it's a pretty damn special day for my fitness career, my channel, everything, and I thought that what better way to kind of, you know, fill you guys in on this than to do a little bit of a life update, but not just a life update, because come on guys, come on, if you, if you know my channel, I'm not the kind of normal person that can just be like, hey, here's what's going on in my life. No, 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 on my channel, you know we need a wait. But before we get into that, there's something very important that I think I need to establish first. I need to establish beforehand, and this is going to be a very important lesson. So please pay very close attention, especially to you guys out there who may be a little bit newer, maybe if you guys are a little bit younger, those of you who are kind of considering, you know, bulking this winter, which is the what like 95% of people do, at least, you know, those in the northern hemisphere. And so many people who don't understand this it really screws them up. And I'll be honest, I'm the first person to have gone through this. I had so many issues with this when I was younger and I wish that someone, if I can go back in time and like talk to you, you know, stupid 18 year old Igor, the guy who's in high school, the guy who's trying to work up to like his first, you know, two plate bench press, listen closely, you dumb motherfucker. So there is something I want you guys to understand today. I'm gonna call it the natural bodybuilder's dilemma. Please tell me that's how you spell dilemma. Fuck yeah. Take that, Jordan. My girlfriend's always like, oh my god, Igor, you're so ESL, you can't spell. Mm, fuck yeah. Now one thing I do want to clarify is I say the word bodybuilder, but this, this doesn't have to be only towards bodybuilders. Pretty much anybody working out to get more muscle mass, to get leaner, to get stronger. If you do anything in the gym to improve your physique, I pretty much count you as a bodybuilder anyway. This doesn't mean you have to specifically be that 0.1% of people who actually put on that little man thong, oil yourself up, get a weird creepy tan, and then get on stage and do like eight hours of <laughs> No, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. Pretty much you can say bodybuilder is synonymous with just guy who lives. Either way, the dilemma is as follows. There are three kind of goals or three states that an individual can always be. You can be big slash strong. The true, uh, the two are, what strong? Mm, fucking ESL. Slash strong. The two are relatively interchangeable because although they are not perfectly correlated, they are still positively correlated. It's very rare that you're gonna see someone who's big and not strong or vice versa. It's not the exact same way of training, but chances are this happens, this, you know, closely follows suits. The other one is lean. Essentially, you have a low body fat percentage, you're, you know, like 10, 12, maybe even less uh, percentage body fat. You've got a legit six pack, congratulations. You look awesome. And the third one is natural. And here is the dilemma. You have three options, you get to pick two. Now, one thing I wanna say right off the bat. Wait a second, did you see that? I could already hear you guys. I could already sense, you know, these pissed off trolls getting their, you know, their dislike buttons ready. Like, Igor, shut up. You're just a hater. You know, you can be big and lean and natural all at the same time. Just because you can't do it doesn't mean other people can't. Relax. That's not necessarily what I mean. You can still build a physique. Don't get me wrong. That is going to be relatively big and strong and is going to be relatively lean. You don't have to become a fat ass in order to be big and obviously natural and vice versa. You don't have to become a, a tiny little twig in order to be lean. However, if you want to maximize um, either of these uh, variables, to do all three at the same time is going to be very difficult. And if you guys want some like some actual real world examples, because you know it's, it's easy for me to talk about this, but you know if you don't want to take it from me, think about some other uh, guys in our fitness industry. A few really good ones that personally to me jump to mind would be like take Chris Jones, uh, Beast Mode Jones, as some people may know from Pump Chasers, an OG fitness channel which has been around way longer than me. And even though he has built a fantastic physique and has years of experience, one thing which Chris does, which I love because it's very 
very applicable and realistic to you guys, the actual person who can take the information that we give and use it, is that Chris actually puts on some fucking body fat when he's trying to get bigger. He's even got this kind of like joke thing. I don't know if he still does that. I know in the OG days, he used to always call himself like Fat Jones back when he would like dirty bulk up to like 220 pounds or something, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it is when you realize that he's only like 5'7 or 5'8 or something around there. Yeah, in the past, he's definitely been uh, fluffy to say the least, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think he does that as hard anymore. He doesn't get up to like freaking 220, 230 pounds, like full out dirty bulk. But in the off season, in order to put on maximal amounts of strength, and I'm not saying like, you know, some size and some strength, but if you want to maximize this, you're gonna have to sacrifice this to a certain extent. As you see, I'm not looking too lean. I'm not looking too gray. I'm looking fat, right? No, definitely not looking my best. But, guys, let me tell you, this was probably the time I made my best gains. I'm not saying you have to become some fat ass at 30% body fat with blood pressure that's higher than your phone number, but are you gonna have to say temporarily goodbye to the six pack, especially perhaps during the winter? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Other examples of individuals would be someone like uh, Omar Isof or Jeff Nippert. If I remember correctly, Jeff, uh, he actually, I think you mentioned in like one vlog, I believe it was like last year, how he was trying to keep his body fat percentage when he was putting on mass. He even calls it like bear mode, where it's pretty much like you're trying to get as big as, as you possibly can, even if it comes at, you know, the expense of somewhat of a high-ish body fat percentage. I mean, high-ish being relatively speaking, of course. I mean, according to the average stats of like the average North American, it's still like li literally in our fitness industry, when we say high body fat percentage, that's still like leaner than like 80% of, you know, the average American. But he got up to like, I think it was like 20% body fat. I weighed in this morning, hundred and I think it was 171 pounds. I haven't really been tracking this accurately. Just You're not going to be fucking walking around 365 days a year with fucking like abs and serratus and like, ah, you married aesthetics and ah. I mean, if you want to maximize this, then yeah, one of these is going to have to go. Another fantastic example in our, you know, fitness industry would be Omar Isov, who I believe he actually made a video on a topic very similar to this just a day or two ago. So I know that he, at least to some extent, agrees uh, greatly with what I have to say here. And guys, I also want to mention, I know this happens every time that guys like Jeff or Chris are uh, mentioned in a video. Immediately, there's like 7,000 comments and it just turns into some fucking full-out hate flame comment war where people are arguing like, oh my God, did you use this guy? He's such a fake natty. Oh my God, are you fucking dumb? Blah, blah, blah. And then someone else comes in like, oh, you think anybody bigger than you must be on steroids? What a beta loser. Blah, 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 blah. This shit never ends, and you know what? That's not the purpose of this video. Fine, if you don't want to take any of these examples, fine. Don't even think about Chris or Jeff or Omar. Take me, for example. I mean, I think the majority of you would believe that I am a natural bodybuilder because I am. I don't really talk about it that much because it's kind of a it's kind of a, like a topic that I don't like to approach because again, like I said, the second you even say just you just whisper the word like and then immediately like this shit starts in I, I don't like it so in 2018 i didn't really get up to a uh, high-ish uh, body fat percentage especially in the beginning in winter so almost like around a year ago today i got up to like 188 190 pounds which for a guy that's six feet tall is is, is normal but in the past when I was at my biggest, when I was at my strongest, when I competed, uh, I've competed in actually three powerlifting meets, if I remember correctly. Yes, three in my life. In all of those meets, I actually, uh, just three for three in a row, I hit uh, PRs on almost all of my lifts. My last meet, actually, I PR'd and got a, the best I've ever lifted by like around 10 or 15 pounds on the actual meet day on my third attempt in my bench squat and deadlift. In all those cases, I was always somewhere in the 200s. I was always at a slightly higher body fat percentage, probably somewhere towards 18 to 20 uh, percent, you know, just giving an estimation visually and based on what it says on uh, my actual scale. I have like one of those scales where you step on it, it sends an electrical current through your, uh, through your body. And then based on the actual electrical impedance, because again, different tissues in your body, muscle, fat, water, all this stuff, it uh, impedes electrical currents differently. It gives you an estimation on your body fat percentage. It's not perfect, but I think it's pretty damn good for something that's 50 bucks. Either way, 18 to 20% body fat, that for me, I know for a fact, when I'm in the 200s, that is my biggest and my strongest. I couldn't do that from a promotional business standpoint. Unfortunately, guys, when it comes to social media and business and what's best for your body, the two, they sometimes butt heads and they aren't, they aren't always uh, perfectly intertwined together. And this is one thing I want you guys to understand because 
so many people who don't get this, like, man, I get so many messages because I work with people all over the world, clients, and they'll talk to me. And these guys are like, especially if you're young and you're trying to put on muscle, you're trying to put on strength, but people are terrified to bulk. I think social media is a big reason why. Social media, like, it's in some ways it's nice and it's cool. You learn a lot. Everybody's, everyone's all connected and it's nice. And in other ways, it's fucking cancer. It's, it's doing terrible things to people from a psychological standpoint in, in many serious ways, but one of those is also fitness. So many people are used to seeing fucking just guys jacked up to the gills and they're, they're like, oh, I'm going on a bulk this year and they get up to like 11% body fat. They still have a full out shredded six pack. It's just not, it, it's lean, but it's not their usual stupid freaky lean. And then they're like, oh man, I'm so bulked up walking around on like 210 pounds, 11% body fat, still fucking ripping 315. You know, their strength went down like point, but you know, it went down like 5% maybe. And this kind of fucks with a lot of guys' heads out there, myself included. When I was younger, when I was like 18, 19, 20, we didn't have Instagram around back then, but we did have Facebook. And I would see some of these guys and it, it kind of does fuck with you a little bit because you think like, okay, if they can do it, I should be able to as well. And if I get even a little bit, you know, if my six pack goes away even temporarily, immediately people start panicking. I've got so many clients or people I've worked with in the past, they gain a little bit of body fat percentage. And then these guys come to me and they're like, Igor, I'm terrified. Like my one ab is starting to slowly slip away. And am I getting above 13% body fat? Oh shit, oh, fuck it, I'm obese. And I'm like, dude, what the hell happened to your brain? I mean, from a psychological standpoint, this is ridiculous. This is literally getting pretty damn close to straight up fucking body dysmorphia. You see so many guys in our industry who, you know, fuck it, let's call it what it is. There's a shitload of steroids in our industry. And, and there's also some people with fucking crazy genetics. So you see that and it kind of fucks with your mind. You start to freak out and that's not a healthy and that's not an effective strategy for the long term. But nevertheless, it is a little bit hypocritical of me to say all that stuff and then not do what is best for my body. I'm trying to lead to you guys, especially a lot of you guys out there who are newer to fitness, newer to strength training. I'm trying to lead by example, not just lead by 7,000 word, you know, whiteboard video essays. So guys, that's it, fuck it. Today, I'm officially announcing it. We got three goals for, that's this whiteboard micro kind of sucks, but hopefully you guys can see. Simply put guys, number one, we got a fucking powerlifting meet. That's right. I am returning. I was going to say return to the stage. I am returning to the powerlifting platform. There are a couple powerlifting uh, meets I'm looking forward to. I got one uh, in my local area in May and another one in June. The one in June is actually at the Toronto Pro Super Show, which is like the biggest uh, Toronto based, actually all of, all of Canada based. Uh, fitness and bodybuilding overall expo. It's kind of like they got the Olympia and the Arnold Classic in the States. They got body power in the UK. Well, in our Toronto, Canada world, we got the Toronto Pro Super Show. And you can actually compete in amateur powerlifting in the actual uh, the actual like convention. And I thought that would be so cool because every year I go and I meet so many of you guys, especially like my Canadian uh, you know subscribers, followers, whatever. Um, and it's so cool to meet you guys, but I'm just kind of walking around like this, you know, just like, hey, hey, whatever. But it'd be so cool to actually compete there and at the same time be able to meet all of you guys. I think it'd, I think it'd, be, I think it'd be really fucking awesome. So I'm really looking forward to that. But not just saying, okay, I'm gonna go compete at a powerlifting meet. What are you gonna lift? I don't know. I'm just here to have fun. You know, everybody gets a, a participation ribbon and fucking we're all gonna, you know, we're all just, we're all just gonna just touch dicks and sing kumbaya. No. Fuck that shit. I'm calling it right now, guys. I've said this in the past. I said this in uh, my Ascension episode one back in August, but 360 fucking five pound bench press. I'm calling it right now. That is my goal. But not just 365, 365 in a powerlifting meet with the pause, which you know is pretty damn, that's pretty damn hard. 365 with a pause is, I always say that a pause bench press is probably around 20 to 30 pounds lower than your touch and go bench press, where you just, you simply come down uh, below 90 degrees, you know, none of that bullshit. You actually touch your chest and then you immediately, no pause, you just, you know, you there's no bounce, but you just, you explode right away from that. When you add in a pause, it usually weakens you by about 20, 25, 30 pounds. For example, my all time heaviest touch and go bench press was 335, but my all time heaviest in competition pause bench press was around 320 pounds. So again, yeah, around 15, 20 ish pounds for me uh, reduction. So I'm calling it fucking right now. My goal is a 365 pound bench press, not just touch and go, but fucking 
pops. Yeah. Fucking, it's like one in the morning. I'm screaming in this office, but fuck yeah, we're getting jacked up. I'm excited, guys. It's fucking, the bulk is real. The bulk is fucking real. I can't, I can't wait, guys. I can't. I fucking can't wait. Number two. Okay, fine, cool. You know, strength is important. You know, I am a lifting channel, but I gotta be honest, I am first and foremost a physique, you know, athlete, maybe not bodybuilding, but men's physique, fitness. I need to put on muscle mass. I haven't been able to do that in, in a while because I'm trying to stay lean. I'm trying to lower my body fat percentage and blah, 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 fuck all that shit. No, this time around, guys, we are gonna be going for five pounds of lean mass. Not just, oh, I'm gonna put on five pounds. It's called, you know, go eat some Wendy's and don't take a shit. No, no, no. We're gonna put on five pounds of lean muscle mass. Not just on top of what I have right now, but on top of what I had maximally last year, which is gonna be challenging because uh, according to the law of diminishing returns, essentially like when you train, you know, if this is you and yours, one, two, three, et cetera, all the way to me, I'm not gonna at 10. I'm at like 13 plus going on going on 14 soon, your muscle mass, it kind of like explodes and then it's kind of like, okay, your ability to actually put on muscle mass, according to the law of diminishing returns, every year it's a little bit less and less and less. So me being able to put on five pounds lean muscle mass, especially after training for over 13 years and getting more and more desensitized to training, it's definitely an ambitious goal, but I'm, I'm fucking excited. I'm gonna go for it. If I don't hit five, at least I'll hit two or three or we are going for it. And finally guys, goal number three, this is gonna be the one that facilitates, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? I'm gonna do it by getting up to 210. Big, beefy, let's be honest, kind of fat, pounds, body weight. I am pretty confident with my current amount of muscle mass and what I have done in the past, I'm pretty confident that, that I could get to 210 pounds of body weight and still maintain a body fat percentage under 20. That's pretty much like my absolute maximum. 20% body fat, that, this marker sucks, I'm sorry guys. 20% body fat, this is like, this is like my, this is my ceiling. And I'm not saying 20% body fat is like fat or anything, but for me personally, I know what my physique is around, you know, towards 20% body fat. And that personally is the most I would want to go because afterwards from a visual standpoint, and even in general in terms of health and how I feel, it starts to, it starts to become less and less worth it. Anyway guys, welcome back. The Ascension is now in full fucking swing. The first few months, I gotta be honest, it was kind of like, I didn't really have a specific goal in mind because I was doing the business stuff, the launch of the course, the launch of the website. There's a lot of stuff that had to be done. And although that's cool, I do enjoy that and that's very important. That was goal number one and it's awesome. But goal number two, this is fucking exciting. The Ascension at its core, in my opinion, is always the best when there's a specific goal in mind. When you spend months and hours in the gym, just agonizing, grueling, training, and it's hard, but I fucking love it. All for those, you know, those 10 minutes on a bodybuilding or men's physique stage, or those, you know, those 20 minutes, you know, those three little lifts on a powerlifting platform, when you spend all this time building up to that, all this hard work and energy, you know, display of all your hard work, that, for me, that is what makes life exciting. That's what makes business and bodybuilding, all this jack, cool, awesome lifting shit, that is what makes it exciting. And I think it's gonna make these videos a lot more exciting as well. So, yeah, six to seven months until the big fucking day. We got a lot of work to do. The next video, I'm very excited because, you know, you may know where you wanna end up, but where are you right now? We need to test our one rep max. Specifically, we need to test our one rep max on my main goal this year, my main goal being the bench press. I mean, I do wanna have a good squat and deadlift, but the bench press, I gotta be honest, that is my number one goal. Uh, that's always been my favorite lift. That's always been my personally weakest muscle group. So I think that's why I have such a personal attraction uh, to the bench press. That is going to be my, uh, my number one goal. And we need to figure out where my, my current strength is right now. And we're gonna be testing that in the next video. But I'm not gonna do that now because I don't have enough time because this video is probably already like 40 fucking minutes long. I apologize, but again, guys, Welcome to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you who've stuck for me, for me, through me. It's, it's late, guys. Stuck with me until the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Just because you can't do it doesn't mean other people can't.